might call it London's seventh wonder, the camel humps of the Thames barrier, but that view has the pants beaten out of it by this. Britain's gentle motorways where cars and convention are co-joined twins, but the Ferrari 599 GTB has other things in mind. And the man to test this differential equation of convention and civility is ITV's pulling power and motoring sophologist Kevin Haggerty. And View magazines come along for the ride. It's a really powerful car, 620 brake horsepower. So what we're looking at really is just to what extent the Ferrari matches the challenge of that power. And if it really is a concept that works, can you make 620 brake horsepower work in those conditions under that kind of pressure? The answer has to be yes, because if it isn't, then unfortunately that Ferrari equation would have failed. Press starts just outside London, the A20, before the bendy, windy road that will be our secret passage back to Ferrari's London Queen UK headquarters. It's got a, a real seat of the pants feel, which means that the chassis's really been well tuned. The steering has just got the right amount of feel. The brakes give you power, they give you information when you need it and the accelerator is very very controllable. It's not an intimidating car and yet you know it's got massive, massive capability. But first, it's time to top up man and beast, inner and outer soul. Unlike the American bald eagle, the Ferrari spreads her wings to take in some sun. This is a V12 Boxer engine. It's the same engine that they put in the uh, mega fast 220 mile an hour ish Ferrari Enzo. Believe it or not, this engine's been slightly toned down because um, they felt that this particular car would be used more for day-to-day -day driving. So I suppose if you said three seconds to 60 and over 200 miles an hour, well, that's, that's, that's the way it goes. But um, they reckon that this car will do about, people will do about 7,000 miles a year in it, whereas in the Enzo with the same engine, they'll do about 2,500. So it's the usable Ferrari with that level of performance, believe me. The engine's actually been put quite far back to keep the center of gravity quite low on the car, which basically means that the weight distribution's around 50-50 back and front, slightly, slightly, slightly weighted to the back, um, but it, it helps to equalize the weight distribution and it keeps the car low. And a lot of this here is Formula One technology. It's all very lightweight. It's all designed to actually um, assist the airflow through the whole of the the whole of the uh, of the bodywork just part of a concept you know it's got the flat under tray as i mentioned earlier um, which is basically the car's flat underneath and then this is just part of the airflow arrangement which is all taken from, from formula one saying that this, this steering wheel is uh, not too dissimilar to the steering wheel you'd see on a Formula One car. Um, it hasn't got as much technology on them because now Formula One cars, most of the technology and, and car adjustments are made from the wheel. But the two most important and significant things I suppose are this and this, the Manatimo this is called. Now basically to start the car you turn the key first and then you press the engine start to get this kind of crescendo. And that sound, is that, is that
that a, is that a Ferrari sound or is that a supercar sound? That's both. That's both. That's unmistakably Ferrari. I've been driving this car and I've heard people stand up and shout Ferrari before it gets into view. So that's that's how uh, how significant that noise is. Uh, but it's also supercar material. Uh, you tell me another car that sounds like that. If you own a Ferrari, one thing you must get used to is admirers ogling your voluptuous curves. Some people lead extraordinary lifestyles. I just get up in the morning, hopefully it's just a good day. I think add, add some spice to the day. So yeah, add some spice. <laughs> not, not, not a bad car you're driving right. Did you have one of these? Uh, I've had one. I've had a 348. You got a 348? No, I had one before. You, oh, you had one before. Oh, God, this if you got out right now, you guys would be having sex with each other about, <laughs> about cars. Oh, because Ferrari people can talk and uh, talk. Absolutely. Yeah. So where is it now? Where's yours? Oh, it's gone. I, it's gone. I, I've done the Porsche, the Ferrari. Oh, all right. So, so what? Is, it, is this kind of... Is this now this, what? This is mellow time. This is mellow. Oh, <laughs> this is what? Grumpy old men's syndrome absolutely. time. Absolutely. You know, get the family saloon car. Be sensible uh, be about sensible. it. Be sensible. For Fantastic. All right. Uh, What's your name? Paul. 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 Nice Let's to meet you. Bye-bye now. See you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, that feeling of oneness. The Ferrari family. Tell you what I like about this. Out of all the things in the world, this is one of the very few cars I've driven that has got enough foresight, and this is a Ferrari, remember. It's not like a, a family car where you can actually pick this up and hang it somewhere and also have this to protect the bodywork. Now that's pretty thoughtful. Our mission is all but about to begin. We can expect some light drizzle, the forecasters say. Now, if you're buying your Ferrari a drink, expect it to be an expensive one. But then if you can fork out the equivalent of a civil servant's life earnings, what's £50 for half a tank? Then it's onto those windy narrow roads where PC Plod is still likely to be riding the beat on his chopper bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> 